Let's bring in Ross Gerber, president and CEO of Gerber Kawasaki, for some perspective. Ross, we know that this sector can be vulnerable whenever we get some anxieties about rate cuts. Um, on these latest comments, on this latest flinch that we're seeing in tech stocks, are you nervous about holding the sector this year? No, and I thank Neil Kashkari for giving investors a chance to buy stocks today based off his absurd uh, unrealistic viewpoint that's in direct contracts to what Powell said this week. It's amazing that the Fed can go out and say one thing and then have several of their governors go out and contradict exactly what the chairman of the board is saying. And so the markets are just moving. It's an excuse to sell some stocks for maybe some institutional owners. But for long-term investors, we're at the beginning and cusp of a massive technological revolution around AI. So this is an opportunity. And it's interesting where we're seeing relative safe havens and relative outperformance in one of your longtime holdings, which is Apple. And as we know that that, that stock has lagged recently, um, it's, it's been under pressure. How do you think about adding um, your exposure to, to a name like Apple and, and whether it can start to outperform at these levels? Well, first of all, Apple's a core holding it, you know, as an investment that we've had and I've had my whole life. And, you know, our clients have a very close relationship with Apple and and we all, you know, have held this stock for a very long time. And Apple's valuation did get a little stretched at, you know, the beginning or end of last year, beginning of this year for its historical valuation. And now it's come back down to, I think, a much more reasonable level. But I think the perception that Apple is sort of under threat and have all these issues is a little bit overdone because the truth of the matter is they just launched one of the most consequential hardware products in the history of Apple. It's an amazing product and, and the potential for it over the next five years is limitless. So this is actually an interesting time with AI and where does Apple incorporate AI onto their devices? And it, it possibly can create a whole new upgrade cycle for Apple devices. So if you look at the integration of AI and then Vision Pro and the extension of their ecosystem, um, there's no reason for investors to be bearish on Apple. So that's interesting. You think the device, a Vision Pro, um, a VR capable headset will succeed where so many others have failed to go mainstream, why? Because it's not just that, you know, it's it's beyond that. It's really the next extension of computing through using glasses instead of a phone. So I don't know if you've noticed, but most of today's youth spend their days staring at their hands as they walk around and so on and so forth. That is a weird world that Apple has created because the devices have become so important to young people in their day-to-day -day experience. But when you think about if I could just have glasses that provided these functions, you know, why would I need a phone? So I think the days of us looking at phones all day will probably be much less in five years thanks to Vision Pro. In some ways, we've been here before. There's always been, there's been periods of time where Apple stock has drifted lower because you think the best days are behind it. Do you see parallels of what's going on now compared to, you know, previous times in Apple's history that have, to your point, proven to be buying opportunities? Well, once again, I've owned Apple my whole life and career and my clients and, and have as well. And and if you sell Apple, I think one should really reconsider, you know, your sanity when it's the monopoly of the digital devices of the globe. So whenever these companies kind of run into sort of a rough patch, they usually tend to get themselves out of it because they have so much money and so many people who are innovative and, and, and so much opportunity globally. So Apple right now is dealing with, let's say, the China slowdown. And, and that's something Tesla and Apple are both dealing with as you know they're big markets for these things. But that's a temporary thing. And so when you look longer term, uh, as an investor, Apple should be a core part of your portfolio. And if you don't own Apple, you might want to take this opportunity today. Ahead of their event in June, there's an expectation they're going to reveal something um, around AI. A, do you think that they will? And B, how meaningful do you think it will be in terms of a driver for the shares? 
Well, this is the thing that we're most excited about because if you've ever used Siri, it's probably one of the worst interfaces yes. ever created. And so when you think about how frustrating Siri has been for users who basically don't use it because it doesn't work, and then all of a sudden, if you imagine it being like a large language model like OpenAI, where actually it has all access to your data and personal information, contacts, all are really private things, but it, we trust Apple with this. And if we're able to access and utilize these things, like can you please pull up all my pictures from Hawaii that include my wife and children? This is a lot easier way to do things than the search currently on your phone, for example. So there's so much opportunity. So they said, oh, buy a new iPhone and you're gonna have a, an LLM on your phone and Siri all of a sudden is super effective. I would, I would upgrade my phone immediately. I guess the challenge is, do they still have that stuff with the abandonment of the car, now reports that they're working on an at-home robot? Um, is innovation still there? Well, we've been complaining about innovation at Apple for a long time, you know, and, and I would argue that it wasn't there, but they've been trying different things. And I wasn't a big believer in the idea of them building a car, but this Vision Pro is a great product and, and I use it and, and I don't use it every day. It's not become an everyday product because it's lacking software. We need more movies shot in spatial you know, computing and we need more games on this thing because there's really just not a lot of content. But the actual hardware is the beginning of a revolution for Apple. They should lean in heavily on this and work on this. So I'm not concerned about an Apple car or other products. They have a great product to build on now. And I think that's where Apple should focus its time is really on AI and making the devices better and Vision Pro and giving people a whole new entertainment and computing experience. I feel some parallels between this story and Disney, which we've also covered because at the same time people are calling it's also one of my top Apple holidays. and oh, Okay, yeah, at the same time people are calling out Apple and Disney is sort of done or best days are behind it. I'm, I'm paying so much and probably would pay more for Disney Plus. Going to Disney is like a $10,000 experience I, that you're obviously going to pay up for because you'll do it for the kids. You know what I mean? It's just sort of like uh, there's a disconnect between the rhetoric and, you know, what consumers can touch, feel and know that they're doing with the company. Right. And and I think there's often this disconnect between like the stock market and what people are saying from an analyst perspective versus like what your kids are saying or what you're actually doing. So when you look at the iconic brands of Apple and Disney together, you know, there couldn't be more popular products right now. Tomorrow, everybody's going to be watching ESPN. You know, we have the most exciting game ever with Caitlin Cook, you know, in, in the final four, you know, ESPN is is turning around. Sports is, is, is huge. And then you look at parks and resorts, exactly what you're saying. You can't go to Disneyland and not spend five or 10 grand. And yet you never feel bad about doing it because your kids have the experience of a lifetime, you know, like they just love it. And, and so when you look at the movie side of the business, which is really where they need to fix is content. And now they've got, you know, Shogun on Hulu, which is great. And they've got Taylor Swift on, on Disney plus, which is great. And, and so if they can cut the costs and, and really keep the great content being made now again, Disney's back, you know, but these are iconic brands in America and, and ones that we feel investors should own for the long term. And that's why we have it in our fund GKA. And, and I've owned these stocks, actually Apple and Disney my entire life.